Blog Talk Radio. Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Habarim, Shalom, give thanks, give thanks. Was talking that first and just kind of tuned in, you know, to the platform. Came in just right on time, right here, here, here. So Arab Tob, Arab, the evening Tob. Some might say Tawab, Tawab. Now, there's some very interesting questions coming in with the biblical Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, you know, and different of the font types, the font types, you know, like a font. You're writing in English, but you use a particular font, or you might change that font, or you might use many different fonts. But anybody who knows and understands English basically knows that you're speaking in English, or you're using the so-called Latin. Um, Hail up to Brother Taharka. He mentioned something about the Kanani, the Canaanite, you know, kind of link and connection right there. So the Latin or the Canaanitish, but what we commonly have been led to um, refer to as the Latin letters. So sometimes when they say the Latin letters, when they say this, they mean the so-called the letters that we write in English. But there's many different so-called Romance languages that use the so-called Latin or the English and the development of it, the nearest, you could say, parent of this modern is like the Latin, the Greco, the Roman, you know, linguistics, a lot of the Germanic, you know, a lot of so-called loan words or um, appropriated words from other languages are used in the English, you know, and that makes for a very mm, interesting, sometimes confusing. You remember at the Tower of Babel to confuse, you know, that confusion of tongues and languages, you know, so this is why we recommend going into the etymology right the etymology what was the original sense or the oldest like recorded sense of these words the old dictionaries the old dictionaries used to have that a lot many of the old dictionaries i don't know how many of y'all kind of recall or do you remember the old dictionaries i said the old dictionaries because speaking to different generations i'm going back like to say the dictionaries from like say have you seen any from the 30s the 20s the 30s from the time of our you know, ancestors over the past hundred or so years here in the 2023. So looking at this um, century, especially for those in the Hebrew and the Israelite, we the ones lost now found black and brown people, Josh sheeple over here in the Americas and the Caribbean for 400 plus years. Speaking of that history, our story, as well as the prophecy concerning us and concerning I and I and concerning we. So just had some very interesting reasonments on the language, linguistics, different questions coming forward. But I really love the question. Some of them are, I would say, you know, um, typically those more harder questions, you know, so we give thanks to the audience, you know, and those who tune in, you know, often and those who tune in from time to time you know, or check out any of the videos and, you know, leave or share comments. Now, we'd like to have a place where these comments can come in, you know, in grace, like in one place, you know. So often we recommend the LOJS.org. There's like a contact, a link there at the website. We put forward for like, say, the Rastafari Jews, that particular platform there on the YouTube, Rastafari Jews, you know, at gmail.com to, you know, just put in the title, like question. You know, a question, you know, if you could use the emoji, you could put that little red dot there, you know, because these are important questions, you know, concerning the scriptures, concerning the faith, the liberty, things that we have heard, things that we have been led to believe, or, or finding out that some things are just make-believe. We've been made to believe things, but as we study, we begin to recognize it's not quite true. And sometimes the people who believe this may have sincerely believed that, but for this generation, we have a little more evidence. We can look over various periods of time due to archaeology, you know, due to the coming together of the nations. The prophecy, right, of Yahweh Loheinu, the Almighty, definitely has come to pass. Even Daniel, Donnell mentions this, and we're going to move forward right here. Daniel mentions they shall go to and fro, 
and knowledge shall increase. Now, how do we hear that and how do we see that as manifesting in reality or actualizing, right? We can look at the most ancient times, they shall go to and fro, right? Ones went here and there and even today, ones go here and there and sometimes you go somewhere else, you learn some things over there, you know? Some have heard about ancient Egypt, ancient Tawi, right? That many people call Kemet. They may have gone there and got to see some of the things that they heard about or they read about, or even the Levant, what's known as, you know, the later day state of Israel or Ethiopia, other parts of the world, Africa, you know, Asia, you know, north, south, east, west, you know? So they go to and fro. And that's one application of the word. Can we say that's not true? That as people go to and fro, that their knowledge increase, even in the times of the Gentiles or the latter-day so-called Anglo-Americans, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, this whole system of things that we are in that's coming to an end, you know, the end of the world, the end of this particular world system. They have gone to and fro in various parts of the world, especially in the continent that's called today Africa, or on the older maps, Ethiopia, you know, and parts of the so-called um I don't even like to use the Middle East phraseology. I don't like to, but it's beyond what we like, our feelings. We got to get off of that subjective to look at it objectively. Objectively speaking, when we talk about the Middle East, people may debate and dispute it, but it is a point of reference. So just as a point of reference, when we're focusing on some of these words and terminologies, you know, like even previous and heal up to Fenota Selassie, you know, one of our fellow um, first unit, constitutional membership of the Ethiopian World Federation members on one of our um, groups on WhatsApp, you know, for like Amharic and seeking to stimulate the interest in learning the language of the King of Kings, Katamawa Hala Selassie. You know, she, I have to say this respectfully, sis, she went on a rant, you know, you know, a Rasta rant. <laughs> it's an interesting Rasta rant. She went on a rant like we bun Bible. Now, some people hearing this will be like, what? Who are these? And we'll maybe think all manners of, of evil, you know, falsely about who, who burns the Bible. We burn this, this, this word, this nomenclature, as we get the knowledge of what it means. And then we look at, well, how do the Ethiopians, how do the Ethiopians, Metzhaf, Kedus, Metzhaf, what's a Metzhaf? Simple, basic translation, it's a book. If we want to now get into more details and kind of unpack it, Right, metzhaf, right? This word and this form come from what's the root. Looking at the linguistics and the etymology and the language from um, tzahafe, 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 which means to write, right? And that which is written, metzhaf. So the written or the writ, right? Kedus, kedus. Kedus often like um, um, kadosh or kodesh often is brought out you know, as b meaning holy, you know, like a kodesh, like a holy thing, something, like adosh, like he who be who he be, the one who in Yeshaya, Yeshayahu, in Isaiah, Isaiah, said, holy, 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 right? Yahweh about right? He who be who he be of armies. So just pointing out that we have to come and study some of these things and we'd like to have a platform you know, and looking forward to having a YouTube that we can kind of focus on some of these basic and even more detailed elementals, you know, of the Hebrew and the biblical Hebrew. Now, I'd like to also recommend Queen Makeda, I was sister Queen Makeda Mora, you know, a teacher, you know, in the Hebraic sense, you know, of the language and linguistics, modern Hebrew, and also on her platforms and our related platforms, you know, the biblical Hebrew, you know, amongst our people, you know, amongst the different mansions. In my father's house, there are many mansions as we go to and fro. Oh, the other aspect of going to and fro is speaking about the technology. We can see the actualization of that biblical word seen in the context of prophecy or speaking of something that was not, right, but was to come. He who be who he be, you know, he who was, he who is, he who will be, has already seen that. So has he not already seen the technology, right? And the technology going to and fro is the basic root 
right? The root of all this internet, right? The so-called internet social media. I think they call it what the binary, the binary, the one and the zero, right? The whole binary system, the one and the zero, right? And even in the scripture, we can see that same binary aspect. Let us make man, right? Adam in our image after our likeness, male and female, he created them. Even that sense of the binary, but going to and fro, is how the technology that we presently use ain't nothing new under the sun. Just want to say that right there. There ain't nothing new under the sun. Does this mean that this technology or something like it may or actually did exist in ancient times? I don't have any doubt about it. Can we present the receipts? We can present some receipts, but the receipt that we all have is the receipt that we are all using and utilizing. The modern technology fulfills and brings out in the actualization what is called and referred to as a prophecy in the book of Donnell. They shall go to and fro, the modulation. They call it modulation in modern science and technological terminology, modulation, like modulation and demodulation. You know, the one, the zero, like the yes, the no. Reminds me of Robenu Yeshua Hanotri. I, our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, I, Yeshua of Nazareth, when he says, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. And even the use of the affirmation, right, as well as the denial. You know, so looking at just the basics, the one and the, one and the zero, the yes and the no, the modulation and demodulation. And then on top of that basic principle, we have the machshev, machshev, using the Hebrew term, machshev. What's a machshev? Right? Machshev is like the word for computer. And it comes from, in the Hebrew sense, from the hashab, hashab, which means to think, but also means to reckon, like to account. Right? Reminds me of even the chazon, the vision, the chazon of Yohanan, the book known as Revelation of the Vision. Of, of John, right, or the grace of Yahweh, Yohanan. Even in that particular book there, speak about let him who have wisdom, you know, count. Did you know that the original computer, the original sense of the computer before we had these um, devices that we use today and, and these modern devices, that the original etymological use of this word computer referred to a man or a person, a human being. So the first use of the word computer, the first concept right, among previous peoples, right, and no doubt also amongst ancient peoples, right, was to a person who can count or who can computate, can reckon. It's almost like the sense of an accountant, right? You see how an accountant deals with math and how math basically is a for the most part, it's a, a very perfect science in the sense of, you know, math usually don't have maybe answers, you know, one plus one, you know, equals two. Now, of course, there's that whole new math thing. You just put that, you know, put that in the garbage for a moment because we're dealing with real math, you know. Some people are against this whole binary thing, you know, on other areas and levels of society, you know, like talking about, you know, some activists out there, you know, are trying to get everything, you know, to a kind of a non-binary way. Now, think about that for a moment. Since we see this binary principle, right, in nature, right, or the natures, if you please, but in the basic elemental aspects of the creation, right, we see the binaries here, you know, day, night, male, female, you know, left, right, you know, we can go through a, a series of that, and it just seems that that's a fingerprint, right, of the blameless creator on his creation. And now we have man and human beings, right, taking these basic same principles and creating these very interesting and in some sense wonderful, you know, devices that we know as these computers, right? But then we look at the original sense of computer, right? So man, the human being, was the first and original computer. Just to segue here, right, here in the upper room and here on this podcast and here in this time in the season, we're in this time of the Cheshbon, 
Hashbon from the same Hashab, Hashab, Hashab root. We have Hashbon, right? Hashbon Hanefesh. What is the Hashbon Hanefesh? Well, it's like the 40 days prior to Yom HaKippurim, right? And prior to, we could say the the autumnal, the autumnal festival season. Now before, and sometimes we might default to it, but we will call it like the fall festival. Some will say the fall festival, but then, you know, I and I is supposed to rise. We already have fallen. Now it's time to get up, stand up, right? So we say, fire bun that, you know, as a sister, she, she, she bunt out the whole Holy Bible and then having met of Kedus. We had met of Kedus and Holy Bible. You've probably seen the meme, right? We got that out there, I think, from uh, some Ethiopian um, Bible software out there. Basically, it was an open book. And then it says Holy Bible in the English, right? And at the bottom of the book, open book, it says Me se ha se ke du se. Met haf ke dus. And what does met haf ke dus? Does met haf ke dus mean Holy Bible? In a pseudo translation, that's what, that's what we've been getting for 400 plus years in, in so many ways. A lot of pseudo, not all, not all, but a lot of pseudo translations. When we look at the meaning of the word, it means like the holy writings, like the sacred writings. And then we say the etymology even of Bible in this Western Gentile world. And we'll find that at one time, they even referred to the holy scriptures or writings. So the scripture, holy, holy scripture. In an English sense, might be even more appropriate than the Bible, 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 right? Than the Bible. But anyway. You know, so ones may not say that we are doing that up here, 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 you know, <laughs> love you still. Let's ride up right here. And when yes, they would sir. come in, they went up into an upper room, an upper room, an upper room. They went up into an upper room, upper room, upper room, upper room, upper room, upper room. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they would come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. So let's go up, 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 up to higher, higher heights, right? Into the heavens, right? The kingdom of the heavens, the higher heights. You know what I mean? Not the low, you know, but the heavenly. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So bring the heavens to the earth, as he says. And if we will do these things and fulfill these things, you will make it as the days of heaven, right? On earth, even this earthly plane. You know, so right here, here, here. Daniel, all right, Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. Let's give an ear and hear right here. It's Daniel chapter 7 right here. Yes, sir. Chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his face. Then he wrote the dream and told the son of the matter. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my visions by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, devoured and 
break in pieces and stamp the residue with the feet of it. It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. It had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of man, and the mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. There was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the four beasts, which was diverse from all the others. A fiery stream issued and came forth from the forest. Fiery stream, fiery stream, fiery stream, fiery stream. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. An upper room, an upper room. They went up into an upper room. Upper room, upper room, upper room. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me, and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet, and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things looked with more stout than his belly. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and time for the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. 
and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitation much troubled me, and my confidence changed it. But I kept the matter in my heart. When they were come in, they went up into an upper room. An upper room, an upper room. They went up into an upper room. Upper room. Upper room. Upper room. Behold. Behold the lion of the tribe of. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. 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 Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. 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 In the Christian tradition, based on Acts. 113, the upper room was said to be the site of the Last Supper, i.e. the cynical. But it was not the upper room found in Mark 14.15 and Luke 22.12 is the site of the Last Supper. However, the upper room in Zion, Acts 1 and 13, located on Mount Zion in the city of Dawid, was the usual place where the apostles of Adonai Baruchu stayed in Jerusalem and according to the Rastafari encyclopedia based upon Acts 2 and 42 as it is written and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers it was thus the first church of the Nazarene our black master and savior Yes, yes, Christ. Yes, sir. and said yes. by many to yes. be the first yes. Christian church. Yes. Christian church. Yes. Christian church. Yes. Christian church. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes. From the upper and river beyond, what they beyond? Distinguishing the light seekers from the peons. Ron, say it on us, lay upon us, knowledge that is eons. Old has it been told since the days of old. And I sit and watching the story unfold. Yeshua gave us the code, gave us the name. Kept the Maui Hala Selassie, the first will reign. The open of the book of the seven seals. It's time for the gathering. It's the matter and no, not the Vatican. Christ in his kingly character, we on that again. I'ma keep speaking the scriptures until I'm out of wind. Built on the true foundation, there's no shaking. There's no need of you hating. Stop hesitating. How many of you have been waiting? In the upper room. We meeting in the upper room of Zion. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. Upper room, upper room. They went up into an upper room. Upper room, upper room, upper room. The upper room. The upper room.
כל נפשי קו, כל מאודי קו, והיו הדברים האלה, אשר נושאים מצפקה היום, אין לבבי קו, ושיננת מבני קו, ותיבלת בם, ושיפת קו בביתי קו, לכת קו בדרך, ושך בקו ומיך, וכתבת מאוד על ידי קו, והיו לצוס תפות בין עיני קו, וכתבת על מזוזות, ביתי קו, ובשעוני Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, O children of Israel? Blessed be Ab, Ubu, Manfat, Adu, Adu, Amla, Aman. Princess has come out of Egypt. Ethiopians now stretch his forth their hands unto God. O God of Ethiopia, our Divine Majesty, Thy Spirit has come into our heart to dwell in the path of righteousness leads us. Help us to forgive that we must be forgiven. Teach us love, loyalty, and earth as it is in Zion. Endure us with thy wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to do thy will. Thy blessing to you that the hungry be fed, the naked be clothed, the sick nourish, the age protected, and the infant cared for. Deliver us from the hands of our enemies that we may prove fruitful in these last days. When our enemies are past and decay in the depths of the sea, in the depths of the earth or in the bowels of a bee. Oh, give us all a place in thy kingdom forever. Sila. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Jah, thou art the strength and our Redeemer that liveth and reigneth in the heart of man.
of the water Fire, fire, fire My Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, exalted God who bestows bountiful kindness, who creates all things, who remembers the piety of the patriarchs, and who in love brings the Redeemer to their children's children for the sake of His name. O King, you are a helper, a savior, and a shield. Blessed are you, Lord, shield of Abraham. You are mighty forever, my Lord. You resurrect the dead. You are powerful to save. You sustain the living with loving kindness, resurrect the dead with great mercy, support the falling, heal the sick, sick, release the bound, and fulfill your trust to those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, mighty one? And who can be compared to you, King, who brings death and restores life? and causes deliverance to spring forth. You are trustworthy to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Lord, who revives the dead. We will hallow and adore you as the sweet words of the assembly of the holy seraphim who tries to keep holy unto you as it is written by your prophet. And they call one to another and say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of the hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Blessed be the glory of the Lord from its place. And in your holy scriptures it is written thus, The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Praise the Lord. You are holy, and your name is holy, and holy beings praise you daily for all eternity. Blessed are you, Lord, the holy God. You graciously bestow knowledge upon man and teach mortals understanding. Graciously bestow upon us from you wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Blessed are you, Lord, who graciously bestows knowledge. Cause us to return our Father to your Torah. Draw us near our King to your service, and bring us back to you in wholehearted repentance. Blessed are you, Lord, who desires sentiment. Pardon us, our Father, for we have sinned. Forgive us, our King, for we have transgressed. For you are a good and forgiving God. Blessed are you, Lord, gracious one who pardons abundantly. O oh, behold our affliction and wage our battle. Redeem us speedily for the sake of your name. For you, God, are the mighty Redeemer. Blessed are you, Lord, Redeemer of Israel. Heal us, O oh Lord, and we will be healed. Help us, and we will be saved. For you are our praise. Grant complete cure and healing to all our wounds. For you, Almighty King, are a faithful and merciful healer. Blessed are you, Lord, who heals the sick of his people, Israel. Bless for us, Lord, our God, this year, and all the varieties of his produce for good, and bestow blessing upon the face of the earth. Satisfy us from your bounty, and bless our year like other good years for blessing. For you are a generous God who bestows goodness and blesses the years. Blessed are you, Lord, who blesses the years. Sound the great shofar for our freedom. Raise a banner to gather our exiles and bring us together from the four corners of the earth into our land. Blessed are you, Lord, who gathers the dispersed of this people, Israel. Restore our judges as in former times and our counselors as of yore. Remove from us sorrow and signs and reign over us. You alone, O Lord, with kindness and compassion, with righteousness and justice. Blessed are you, Lord, King, who lives righteousness and justice. Let there be no hope for reformers, and may all the heretics and all the wicked instantly perish. May all the enemies of your people be speedily extirpated, and may you swiftly uproot, break, crush, and subdue the reign of wickedness speedily in our days. Blessed are you, Lord, who crushes enemies and subdues the wicked. May your mercies be aroused, Lord our God, upon the righteous, upon the pious, upon the elders of your people, the house of Israel, upon the remnant of their sages, upon the righteous proselytes, and upon us. Grant ample reward to all who truly trust in your name and place our lot among them. May we never be disgraced, for we have put our trust in you. Blessed are you, Lord, the support and security of the righteous. 
Return in mercy to Jerusalem, your city, and dwell therein as you have promised. Speedily establish therein the throne of David, your servant, and rebuild it soon in our days as an everlasting edifice. Blessed are you, Lord, who rebuilds Jerusalem. Speedily cause the sign of David, your servant, to flourish and increase his power by your salvation, for we hope for your salvation all days. Blessed are you, Lord, who causes the power of salvation to flourish. Hear our voice, Lord our God, merciful Father. Have compassion upon us and accept our prayers in mercy and favor. For you are God who hears prayers and supplications. Do not turn us away empty-handed from you, our King, for you hear the prayer of everyone. Blessed are you, Lord, who hears prayer. Look with favor, Lord our God, on your people Israel and pay heed to their prayer. Restore the service to your sanctuary and accept with love and favor Israel's fire offering and prayer. And may the service of your people Israel always find favor. May our eyes behold your return to Zion in mercy. Blessed are you, Lord, who restores his divine presence to Zion. We thankfully acknowledge that you are the Lord, our God, and God of our fathers forever. You are the strength of our life, the shield of our salvation in every generation. We will give thanks to you and recount your praise evening, morning, and noon. For our lives which are committed into your hands, for our souls which are entrusted to you, for your miracles which are with us daily, and for your continual wonders and beneficences. You are the beneficent one, for your mercy is never seen, the merciful one, for your kindness never ends, for we always place our hope in you. And for all these, may your name, our King, be continually blessed, exalted and extolled forever and all time. And all living things shall forever thank you and praise your great name eternally. For you are good. God, you are everlasting salvation and help, all benevolence. God, blessed are you, Lord, beneficent is your name, and to you it is fitting to offer thanks. Bless all peace, goodness and blessings, life, graciousness, kindness and mercy upon us and upon all your people Israel. Bless us, our Father, and all of us as one, with the light of your countenance. For by the light of your countenance you gave us, Lord, our God, pour of light and loving kindness, righteousness, blessing, mercy, life and peace. May it be favorable in your eyes to bless your people Israel at all times and at every moment with your peace. Blessed are you, Lord, who blesses his people Israel with you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before you, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. My God, guard my tongue from evil and my lips from speaking deceitfully. Let my soul be silent to those who curse me. Let my soul be as dust to all. Open my heart to your Torah and let my soul eagerly pursue your commandments. As for all those who plot evil against me, hasten to another their counsel and frustrate their design. Let them be as chaff before the wind, let the angel of the Lord thrust them away. That your beloved ones may be delivered, help with your right hand and answer me. Do it for the sake of your name, do it for the sake of your right hand, do it for the sake of your Torah, do it for the sake of your holiness. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before you, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. He who makes peace in this heaven, may he make peace for us and for all Israel and say Amen. May it be your will, Lord our God and God of our fathers, that the Beth Hamkidash be steadily re- rebuilt in our days and grant us portion in your Torah. In your Amen. 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 Torah. Amen. My advice to all advice to all advice to all advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. Fulfill the Ten Commandments. Fulfill the ten. His foundation is in the wall of mountains. Jalavis the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things have been spoken of the O city of God. I'll make men shine to Rehab and Babylon to them that know I. With the old Philistine entire area with Ethiopia, it shall be said that this man was born there. And the IS himself shall establish the earth. Ja Rastafari. So right here, 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 the evening psalm right here for the fifth day. 
fifth day of the week of the Shabua here, called Thursday, Upper Room of Zion Podcast here on the Rastafari Israelites, Rastafari Foundation, on other channels and platforms. Give thanks, give thanks, co-laborers. Right here we have Psalm 81, the evening psalm, the standing psalms like the evening psalms. And here we have for the fifth day, we have Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Mizmor pe alef lam natse ya hala hagitit le asaf le asaf le asaf le asaf le asaf le asaf Sing aloud unto God our strength our strength Uzenu 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 Harninu le Elohim Uzenu 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 Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob God of Jacob God of Jacob Le Elohe Yaakov Le Elohe Yaakov Le Elohe Yaakov Hariu lelohe yaakul 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 lelohe Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou calledst in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. There shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied, 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 I have satisfied. It's crazy. For the truth, you don't know how they're gonna react. You scared of wrongdoers, people that's just ignorant. You scared of the truth. Be patient. Atonement, and then we have Sukkot. 
So it's interesting how the schedule works, you know what I mean? On that first day of the seventh month, the seventh moon, you know, then those 10 days, the 10 days of awe, we have this 10 days reflected even in the Chazon of Yohanan concerning being tried, tested for 10 days, right? And five days after Yom HaKippurim, the day of the atonement, a more fuller expression of what the Hebrew says. Often, commonly, they say Yom Kippur. But as we pointed out to Hebrew, that would mean a day of a atonement. But the scripts say Yom HaKippurim, the atonements, the coverings. And then we have five days after that, we have the seventh of the seven appointed feasts, the Mo'adim, appointments and festivals for Kol Yisrael Yasharala, the Mo'adei Yahuwah. So here's what we're coming up in the season. So 40 or so days, right, before with the month, the sixth month, the sixth moon is the time that's known as the Cheshbon HaNefesh. Cheshbon, as we touched on earlier, talking about computer and going to and fro and the connection of the linguistics and hashab to think to reckon to account so often it's called the um soul reckoning time accounting time as leading up to that day of the atonement that day according to ha torah where we are to afflict our souls now interesting reasonments on all of that right there but just a context here in the time and the season let's go forward with some of the hebrew here of the evening psalm right here as the psalm is seen le hitorer israel to wake up israel so we touched on the english there here's a little bit of the hebrew enunciation and then we'll ride up with the fifth and the sixth aliot here as we're coming to the fullness of this seven this strong we're in this sabbath or shabua week of comfort you know we have the seven weeks of comfort leading up to the autumnal festival to the third of the three times in the year. So here, here, here. Boko Yom Hamishi. It is the fifth day of the week, and we do have a Tehillim that is recited in the fifth day of the week, found in chapter 81. And again, it will be recited also in Hebrew. Let's begin. Ram Nazeha. Al Hagetit, La Asof, Halimu, Lelohim, Uze, Hawu, Lelohe, Yaakov, Su, Zemwa, Utnetov, Kino, Naim, El Navel, Tiku, Vahoresh, Shofa, Bakese, Leom, Hage. Ho la Yisrael, Hu Mishpot, Lelohe, Yaakov, Edut, Bihosef, Sam, Bazid, Alviet, Mizraim, Sofat, Lo, Yadati, Eshma, Hasiroti, Misavel, Shiku, Kape, Midud, Tavona, Badzawa, Karata, Vahalze, Im, Basita, Vaam, Echam, Alme, Amriva, Sela, Shema, Ame, Veda, Ba, Yisrael, Im, Tishmale, Lo Yie, V, El, Za, Vilo, Tishta Have, Lel, Neha, Anoke, Yahava, Elohe, Hamaal, Neerit, Midraim, Hahefpe, Vaamale. Velo Shama, Ame, La Kole, Vizuel, Lo Avale, Va Ashahe, Bishwerut, Leba, Yaku, Bimoazote, Lu, Ame, 
Shomea, Le, Yisrael, Birwake, Yahaleko. Kimat, Oeve, Aknea, Val, Zoe, Ashiv, Yadi. Mazane, Yahava, Yaka Hashulo, Vihe, Ita, Lolam. Vaya Akile, Mehalev, Cheta, Umizur, Devash, Asbeye. Mizmor pe alef lam natse ya ala hagitid le asaf. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Uzenu, arminu le lohim uzenu. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. God of Jacob. Take a song and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou calledst in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. Their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock. Should I have satisfied, 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 I have satisfied. Yes, yes, yes. So that was the evening psalm, Psalm 81, here for the fifth day of the week of the Shabua. And here we have the 49th sabbatical study, Kite A, when you go forth forth to war. An interesting area of scripture that has a lot of various and diverse discussion on in different platforms, different areas. This Torah reading and feeding the 49th, you know. But here we're at the fifth day, so for the fifth and the sixth day, Aliyo, right here, here, here. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, O children of Israel? Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Adonai Echad. Hear, 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 Shema Yisrael, here give ear for the Hamishi, the Hamishi Aliyah, here for this Shabbat Ki Tate. Here picking up the fifth book of Moshe, the Hebrew book called Deuteronomy. Hear, 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 Shema Yisrael, here give ear for the Hamishi, the Hamishi Aliyah, here for this Shabbat Ki Tate. Here picking up the fifth book of Moshe, the Hebrew book called Deuteronomy, here Deuteronomy chapter 23, here at verse 24 for the Hamishi Aliyah. One note is that in the Chumash, the Hebrew, this is verse 25, but here 
for those following along in the English, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 24, for the Hamishi, the fifth reading, the fifth Aliyah, up offering, offering up, for this Shabbat, Ki Te Tse, Sabbath, when thou goest forth. Ki Taboa, Bi Karen, Re Eka, We Akalta, In Nadim, Ke Nafshika, Saveka, We Loa Kalika, A Lo Titain. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, thy neighbor's vineyard, ki tavo bi karema re ka, then thou mayest eat grapes, thy fill, at thy own pleasure. We akalta in navima ke anaf seka sav eka. But thou shalt not put any in thy vessel with illa kaleka lo titain. When thou comest into the standing corn of reeka, the eye's neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle to thy neighbor's standing corn. And here, 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 fifth book of Moses, Hebrew book called Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 24, the Mosaic law of divorce. Compare and contrast with Matthew's uh, Wengel, Caduce Matthew's Wengel, Matthew's Gospel chapter 19, verse 8, also 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 12 to 15. But here, 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 still in the Hamishi, the fifth Aliyah here, Deuteronomy chapter 24. When a man hath taken a wife, Aisha, and married her, and it comes to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him make him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of Beito, out of his house. And when she is departed out of Beito, his house, she may go and be another and other man's Isha. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of Beito, his house, or if the latter husband die, which who took her to be Ishto, his wife, her former husband who sent her away may not take her again to be Ishto, his wife. After that, she is defiled. For that is To'aiba, abomination, lifne Yahweh, before Jehovah. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, to commit uckery, to sin, to uck, uck, which Yahweh Eloheka, Jehovah, the eye, Elohim, giveth the eye for an inheritance. And here, 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 Shema Yisrael, here, 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 Gevir, here, Deuteronomy chapter 24, here at verse 5, divers regulation, and the Sheshi, here we have the Sheshi, Sheshi, the sixth reading, the sixth Aliyah up offering for this Shabbat Ki Teitze. Deuteronomy chapter 24, here at verse 5, beginning the section, subtitled, Divers Regulations. Kia yikach isha isha chadasha lo yitzaya batzava wi lo ya ibora alayo li kola davara na kia yihye li beito shana echat wi simach eta ishto asha alakach when a man hath taken a new wife, a new Isha, a new woman. Kia yikach Isha Isha Hadasha. He shall not go out to war. Lo Yetse Batsava. Neither neither shall he be charged with any business. With Lo Ya Ebora Alayo. However, but he shall be free at home one year, and shall cheer up his wife, which who he hath taken. Le kola davara naki yehye le beito shana echat we simach eta ishto asher lakach. No man 
shall take the nether or the upper millstone, milestone to pledge. For he taketh a man's life to pledge. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, of the B'nai Israel, of the Israelites, and maketh merchandise of him or selleth him, then that thief, that thief shall die. And thou shalt put evil rara away from among you. Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently, and do according to all that Ha Kohanim, the priest Ha Lewin, the Levites, shall teach you, as I commanded them. So ye shall observe to do. Remember what Yahweh Eloheka, Jehovah the I Elohim, did to Miriam. By the way, after that ye, y'all, were come forth, me mitrayim, out of Egypt, out of Kemet. When thou dost land Achika, thy brother Windemith, anything, thou shalt not go into Beito, his house, to fetch his pledge. Thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou dost lend shall bring out the pledge abroad to thee. Aye. And if the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. In any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge again when the sun goeth down, that he may sleep in his own raiment, and bless thee, I, and it shall be righteousness to thee, I. Lifnei Yahweh Eloheka before Jehovah the I Elohim 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 Live by this world and the wicked as a crumble of the Bible Shout out Oh, no, God. 
Today's daily psalm is Psalm 16, Habarim, Psalm 16. 
let's see if we can share. We have a fifth day Aliyah just going into today's Aliyah portion of the Torah reading and feeding for key takes. A hey, some important subjects are raised right here that we even find in the New Testament scriptures. But first thing, firstly, foremostly today's daily psalm. So we have the evening psalm, which remains the same for the particular evening. And then we have the daily psalms here, even in the season. So let's try that. Here we have today's daily psalm, we have psalm, psalm 16. Mizmor tet zain, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust, my trust, my trust, my trust, my trust. Shomreni el, ki hasiti vach, 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 vach. O oh, my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord. Adonai ata, 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 ata. Tovati bal alecha, 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 bal alecha. Thou art my Lord. Adonai, 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 Adonai. My goodness extendeth not to thee but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another god. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord, who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. 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 The theme, the theme, the theme, Chavarim, today's daily psalm has to do with that happiness. The happiness as a result of the fruit of his way, truth, and life, and liberty. So here we have the gladiators. And here, let's just go to a little verse by verse right here, here, here from the gladiators. And Brentwood Disco said, happy man, happy man. Yes, sir. Be happy. Needs more, needs more to take to Zane. Needs more to take time. Psalm 16, he's more to take the vein. Psalm XVI. Miktam Lidawi, a miktam of David. Shamreni El, Ki Hasiti Bak, keep I, O El, for I have taken refuge in the eye. Amarita La Yahuwah, Adonai, Ata, Tovati. Bal Aleka, I have said to he who be who he be to Jehovah, thou the I art Adonai Ata. I have no good but in the I. Tovati Bal Aleka. Lik Doshim Asher Ba'aret Heima. We adire call Hefi Bam. As for the holy, the idle ones that are in the earth, they are the excellent, in whom is all my delight. Yerubu atsubotam achir maharu, balasika nisakehemma midam, ubal esa etashmotam al sifatai. Let the idols of them be multiplied that make suit to another. Yerubu atsubotam achir maharu. 
This sorrow shall be multiplied and exchange for another. Balasika nisakehema midam. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer. Ubal esa etashimotam. All sifatai. Nor take their names up, up on my lips. Yahua menata helki wukosi. Ata tomika gorali. Ocha hova he who be the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup of my chalice thou the I maintainest my life khbalim anafluli banna amin afana khlata shafra alai the lines are fallen to I in pleasant places yea I have a goodly heritage Ibareka Eti Yahua Ashara Ye Atani Afale Lota Yisaruni Kili Yotai I will bless Jehovah He who be we Ibareka Eti Yahua Who hath given me Who have given I counsel Ashara Ye Atani Ye For show In the night seasons My rains My Kidneys, my emotions, instruct I. Afale lota yisaruni akiliyotai. Shuiti yahua lenegadita mi. Kimi mini bal emota. I have set sharp over he who be who he be. Always before me, always before I. Shuiti yahua lenegadita mi. Surely. He is at my right hand. Kim and Mini. I shall not be moved. Bal Emot. Lakin. Samachali B. Wayagel Kovodi. Afbisari Ishkona Lavadach. Therefore, my heart is glad. Lakin. Samachali B. And my glory rejoiceth. Wayagel Kovodi. My flesh. Also dwelleth in safety. As the sari yishkon alavetach. Ki lo ta'alzob na shi lishol. Lo titen a chasideka lerota shachata. For thou the eye will not abandon my soul, my my nefesh, into the nether, to the nether world. Thou will not abandon her to the nether world. Lo. Ki lo ta izob na shi lishol, neither neither will the eye suffer thy godly, thy chasid, one to see the pit, thy holy one to see corruption. Lo titen chasigeka lerota shachata, tod ein oracha chayi, sovash machota etapaneka. Ne emota biyamineka netzach. Thou, the eye, makest eye to know the path of life. Tod aini oracha chayin. In thy presence, in thy face is fullness of joy. Sovash machota etapaneka. In thy right hand, bliss, pleasantness, pleasure. For I the more ne imota be mineka netzach 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 Psalm 16. Mizmor Tet Zain. Michtam, 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 Mich. Le David. Le David. Le David. Le David. Le David. Le David. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. My trust. My trust. My trust. Shomreni El. Ki Hasidi Vach. 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 Vach.
Thou hast said unto the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord. Adonai Ata, 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 Ata. Tovati Val Alecha, Val Alecha. Thou art my Lord. Adonai, 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 Adonai. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my love. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore, 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 forevermore. מזמור ט"ז נחתם לדוד שומרני אל כי חסיד דבר אמרת לאדוני אדוני אתה טובתי בל עליך לקדושים אשר בארץ המה ואבירי כל חפצי בם ירבו עצבותם אחר מהר בל אשיך נשכיהם מדם, ובל אשא את שמותם על שפתיים. אדוני מנת חלקי וחוסי, אתה תומך גורלי. חבלים נפלו לי בנעימים, אף נחלת שפרה עלי. אברך את אדוני אשר יעצני, אף ללא תייסרוני חיליותי. שיביתי אדוני לנגדי תמיד, כי מימיני בל אמות. לכן שמח ליבי ויגל כבודי, אף בשרי ישכון לבטח. כי לא תעזוב נפשי לשאול, לא תיתן חסידך לראות שחת. תודיעני אורח חיים, שובע שמחות את פניך. נעימות במנחה נצח. There's a reason I'd like to share right here. And here for Shabbat Ki Te Sabbath when you go forth. Key words when you go forth to war, also that theme of war. But here for day five, Aliyah right here in the upper room, upper room of Zion, we have an audible to share teaching on corn. Yeah, corn. Corn and Yeshua versus the Pharisees. 
Robainu versus the rabbis, and Moshe, Moses, and the bill of divorce. There's reference to this in the ministry of Yeshua Hanotri, Justice of Nazareth, to these very areas and sections of HaTorah and here in our sabbatical studies, and particularly here for this Shabbat Strong for Shabbat Ki Tates A. So here, here, let's share this audible right here. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, O children of Israel? Grab your pen, your paper, sacred scripture, here, here, here. Yes, sir. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Adonai Echad. Shua, when they was going through, I think it was a Sabbath day, and disciples, you know, they were trodden through like a corn field, and they started to pick some, they were hungry, so they started to pick some corn and eat, you know, on the Sabbath day while they was walking, and then the Pharisees and the, you know, overly so-called really just, you know, over-righteous, you know, ones and ones, scribes and Pharisees, they were like, look at your disciples, they're violating the Sabbath, so forth and so on. Why I mention that there is because here in Devarim, note that the uh, fifth aliyah in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 5, it, it, it picks up with this point here where it says, when thou comest into that neighbor's vineyard, so your neighbor has a vineyard, you come into neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes, right, thy full. Wow. At thine own pleasure, chant, for real, for real, yeah, at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. So these are the rules, regulation, we call like the civil laws of Yashar Allah, of Yisrael, right? That one can, if I went into your, you're my neighbor, I go into your vineyard, and you have grapes growing, I could grab grapes and eat them, you know, in my, from hand to mouth, but I cannot put them in like a vessel, like put them in a bag or something, or a pouch or something like that, you know, like they're going to tease them. But if I come into your vineyard, right, according to John's rules and regulation in Jalan, right, who is the landlord, Jehovah, he is setting the terms and conditions here for Yisrael. Then in verse 25 it says, When thou comest into thy ne- the standing corn of thy neighbor. And this is the part that reminded I hear about with um, Yeshua. In fact, do we have a, here we're looking at the Schofield Study Bible as a kind of a, from an English perspective, as a study point of reference here. So in the Schofield Study Bible, we have uh, Matthew chapter 12, right, chapter 12, verse 1. Let's see if they're pointing to what we heard as we heard it here, you know, heard the audible. We said, chant, that sounded just like, boom, here it goes. Yeshua declares himself, Adon, Ha Adon, Adawan, Lord, Master, Sovereign of HaShabbat, of the Sabbath. It's kind of interesting because Hebraically, the Sabbath is, is like, when we say feminized, the Sabbath is she, right? The Sabbath is she. So it's kind of interesting that Yeshua is declaring himself as Ha'adon, as Adonai. Adonai, Adonai, the husband name of deity, also for master and you could say husband, right, of HaShabbat, master, sovereign of the Sabbath. Here in Matthew, Kedus Mateo, Matinyao, Matthew's Gospel, Chapter 12, verse 1, it says, At that time Yeshua went on the Sabbath day through the Khan, and his disciples, his Talmudim, Talmudav, Talmudayo, were and hungered and began to pluck the ears of Khan and to eat. Yeah, this is, this is what we heard iritically in the ear when we heard the audible, and then for the live streamers, we rewound it again to play it again because. That's when we had noticed the sound was out. You know, we went from the king's chamber to the queen's chamber. You know, the web mistress, and she had stepped out for a moment. You know, you know, to care for I and I, earthly. You know, you know, just family, family thing. Yeah, but she set it all up. But everything, you know, sometimes the technology, you know, just does what it does, does what it does. And I said, chant, it was off. So I immediately try to get the attention. So you know, I haven't learned that just yet, but you know, we're learning it, and um. Yeah, so we're back on. But in playing it again, I heard it, listened to it as one's and one's listened to it as a chant. That part there in Deuteronomy chapter 23 at verse 25 sounds awfully a lot familiar. Because we already know that Yeshua, he quotes Deuteronomy in the temptation vis-a-vis Hasatan, 
the adversary, Satan, the adversarial mind, and that test of his messiahship against the adversarial mind known as Hasatan, is the verse from right here in Deuteronomy, the repetition of the law, the Mishnah HaTorah, that Robeno Yeshua quotes. And there's other quotes here from Yeshua. In fact, this is one right here in this fifth Aliyah. I think we got two in this fifth Aliyah. And it's only a couple of verses right here, but check it. Verse 25, When thou comest into the standing con of thy neighbor, then thou mayest. Not can. Can is like whether you have ability, but mayest is permission. Then thou mayest pluck the ears with thy hand, but thou shalt not, shalt not move a sickle to thy neighbor's standing con. So what it means is basically the land is Jehovah's. He give it to I and I, right? And we can also, you know, have income and even profit from it. But we cannot forbid I and I neighbor, you know, from passing through the vineyard. Right, grab some grapes, you know, and, and eat it and keep it pushing as long as he don't put it in his a vessel or put it in his pocket, you know, or put it in the bag like he's trying to steal our crop. No, he can eat. Right? Gotta eat. Right? And also with the con. The con it is the same thing. And then it says, But thou shalt not move a sickle to thy neighbor's standing corn. If we could live like this, brothers and sisters, would there be shalom in spirit and in truth? Yes. Yay and amen. Now, I'll point that out because when I heard that, it's just like it just resonated. And then here in the Schofield Study Bible, it has a marginal note to Matthew chapter 12, verse 1, Mark chapter 2, verse 23, and Luke chapter 6, verse 1 in the Brit Chadasha. Here we just zoom in on Matthew chapter 12, right? Read verse 1, verse 2 here. But when the Pharisees, when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Now, this reminds I and I from the previous on show 15. Remember, we was going through the Q&As, and we had got to, I think, um, um, Q&A 39, 38, 39. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to fulfill that here, but there's some important Q&As here in this 49th sabbatical study, but there was a footnote. There was a footnote concerning, I think, the Pharisees, right, and how that whole order. Could we hear about the Pharisees in the time of Moshia? But how did that come about, right, and the connection even with Maccabees? I didn't highlight it here. I'm trying to scan over it. Right, boom, I got it right here. Wow, ain't this something? It's question 23. Question 23 for the previous sabbatical study. Question 23. Um, and answer 23 right here. Okay, the question is this. What was the Sanhedrin Gadola? Now, Sanhedrin, right, is the assembly, right, assembly. Gadola is the big. Gadol. Gadol means big and Gadola, right, the big assembly or the great Sanhedrin. And the answer was the Sanhedrin Gadola was comprised of 71 judges. This corresponds to the 70 elders who helped Moshe judge Ha'am, judge our people. They convened at the tabernacle. So in the Torah, we have the tabernacle, right, the Ohel Mo'ed. And then in the land, we get to have the Bait Mikdash, the Bait, the house Mikdash of the Holy, or also known as the temple called the Heikal. Heikal is temple, but it also refers to a palace, a palace slash temple, the Heikal, and then we call it the house of the holy, the Beit Mikdash in the Hebrew, Beit Mikdash in the Amharic. So they convene, they gather together at the tabernacle, we could say in the wilderness, in the tabernacle times, and then at the temple to decide the most important or difficult cases. We have a point of reference to Numbers chapter 11, verse 16. Let's take a pause here. This is what it means to go here a little and there a little and to do due diligence. So 11 and 16, just so we can refresh our memories and our minds on what is being said and whether this is right and accurate. All right? 11 and 16, it says this right here. This is the section that is sub themed from Sinai to Kadesh Barnea. The fifth item is the 70 elders. 
Remember the 70 elders. And this picks up from Exodus chapter 18, verse 19, when Moshe's Medeanite, Ethiopian-related father-in-law, gave him that advice that with him deciding and adjudicating cases among Israelites, you know, the things that go on among one and one have a dispute, and, you know, to keep the peace, need ones and ones to settle the dispute. But Moses was doing this all by himself and his father-in-law, Right, his Medeanite, Ethiopian-related father-in-law, Jethro, gave him good advice. Now here we can see he builds up on this advice right here, and it's approved by Hashem in Numbers chapter 11, verse 16, and Yahweh, Jehovah said to Moshe, Gather to me seventy men of the elders of Israel, the Zikne Yisrael, whom thou knowest, not who you think, or who you believe, or who you hope, or they, they, they look like an elder, but who thou knowest to be elders of Ha'am, of Jah people, and officers over them, and bring them to the tabernacle of the congregation, the Ohel Moed, the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with thee. And verse 17 says this, And I will come down. Now Hashem says, Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, Hakados, Baruch, Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name. He says, And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the Spirit that is up on thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. Right, so we see this groundation for what later on, you know, is known as the Sanhedrin, and we find also the Sanhedrin within the Brit Kadash, the New Testament. So to see where the real roots of this comes from, and where in the Scripture we can point to reference. So now this was the Supreme Court of Yisrael, the Sanhedrin Gedola, the Great Assembly. Right, was the Supreme Court of Yisrael. The head of the Sanhedrin Gedola was Ha Nasi, was the one known as the Nasi. Nasi in Hebrew means prince, but in this context it was taken to be the president. Well, it, it makes a lot of sense because president in some of the Afro-Asiatic languages, like I know in the Arabic we have um, Ra'is, Ra'is. Call my, you know, the Yemenite ones across the Red Sea that be over here in this north country when we reason about Habasha and Ethiopia and they say, you know, they want to call I something. I say, Ra's. I say, okay, say, Ra'is. And they always say, you know what Ra'is mean? Ra'is is the form of saying Ra's in Arabic, right? Ra'is, right? And it's similar to the Ethiopic, right? And we have Ra's, right, in Amharic and Rosh in Hebrew. But in the Arabic, it means like a president. They call their president Rais, Rais, Rais. You know what I mean? Rais. But here we have the Nasi, the head of or the Ras, the Rosh, of the Sanhedrin Gedola, the great assembly, was the Nasi. Now, Nasi, as we said in Hebrew, is a title for like tribal prince, in a sense. It was like in the wilderness, like the tribal prince is like a Nasi, like the head of a tribe so to speak, a prince of a tribe. But here, in connection with the great assembly, it was the title of president. So Ha-Nasi was the head, the Ras, the Rosh, of the great assembly, who served in the role of Moshe. Remember, there were 71 judges. This is based on the 70 elders who helped Moshe. So Moshe was at one plus the 70, 71. So Ha-Nasi, or the president, he served, Right in the role of Moses, Moshe. This is what we have in the New Testament speaking about sitting in Moshe's seat. Of the 70 judges, the most qualified was chosen to serve as Hanasi's assistant, as the prince, president, prince, assistant, and the assistant to the president, the prince Hanasi in the Sanhedrin Gadola was called the Av. Beit Din, the Ab Beit Din. Ab is father, or Av in the modern Hebrew, Av, Av Beit Din, or the Ab, father of the Beit Din. The Beit Din is the house of judgment. So that was the assistant, right? Or, in other words, it would be interpreted as like the father of the court, right? Now, the 69 other judges, right, we have 
three sets of 23. Now, remember that the Sanhedrin Atana, right, the local court, they would have 23, right? So what we have in this 70 number, when we count from the 69 other judges, is three sets of three. They were seated in order of age, the older Shoftim, the older judges, they sat closer to the center of the chamber where Hanasi, where the president, the prince, presided. The seats were arranged in the shape of an ark so that everyone could see one another, panim el panim, face to face. All the judges could see one another face to face as cases were discussed and decided. Most of the great Sanhedrin were composed of Kohanim, composed of priests, like the Levitical priests, Kohanim, and Lewim, and Levites, who served. So the composition of the great Sanhedrin were the priests and the Levites who served at the Mishkan, at the sanctuary, and they were given priority over other B'nai Yisrael, other Israelites. And here we have a reference to Deuteronomy chapter 17, Verse 9, though after the Maccabees, so we talk about the Maccabee Bible and then the apocryphal books, right? In other words, there's 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. So there's a big gap. So when you read in the Old Testament, you get up to uh, Malachi, right? And then you cross over and you go into Matthew. There's like a 300-year gap, right? This is a big, wide gap. Well, no, that's a 300, no, actually 400 years. There's a 400 year gap, right? We counted it, rounding it off, approximate 400 year gap between the events recorded in the last prophecy of what's called the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, Malachi, and the first book, right, of the Brit Hadasha or the New Testament, known as Matteo or Matanyao, Matthew, Matthew Gospel. So in those, um, in that gap fits. Books like Mal, um, 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 Maccabees, you know, other books, but not to go through all the title, but Maccabees. So when Rastaman talk about the Maccabee Bible, we also need to understand what the Maccabee history is. Because there we see the rise of certain orders that as we come into the New Testament scripture, as we come into, you know, um, you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we're reading about scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees and Herodians and Hellenists and this and that. This all develops in that 400-year period of time in the so-called missing books, or the books that have been taken out of like many of the latter-day Western Gentile Bibles, the later versions of the King James Version of the Bible, is missing those books there. So those books are very important to understand where we get ones like the Pharisees, even some of the ascetic groups, you know, like the Essenes and other sort of groups that rise up in that time period. But connected with the Sanhedrin and connected with this Torah reading and feeding, it was after the time of the Maccabees that a group that began off actually as very kind of zealous in a good way, they had a good effect early on, the Pharisees. So the Pharisees was like a good order, a good group, Right? before they became, in the time of the New Testament, a very dubious and, for the most part, a group worthy of reproof and rebuke, as Robeno Yeshua was reproving them and rebuking them. Just to point that out, because some might think like the Pharisees were always bad, but no. We can see this in a lot of things even today. Even in some orders within Rastafari, we can see that, yes, with the elders from way back then, it began off glorious and good. Right, even good and zealous, but some things have sometimes descended right into you know off of track, have gone out of the way, and this is where we get the Pharisees when we open the book in the New Testament. But there's a background history, and the reason why ones don't have it is because those books have been taken out, and ones have haven't been given the opportunity to study and to see it in context. Right now, the Pharisees later on, after the time of Maccabees. Right? And the Maccabee Bibles, the Pharisees, right? The Pharisee in the Hebrew, you know, Pharisim, 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 basically means to be separatists. Right? So they were a group of Yehudim, ones who were zealous about Ha Torah, that basically separated. 
Thus we have the name Pharisi, Paris, Paris, Pharisee, separatists. So they then assumed, right, they rose up then to assume the, um, you could say, the main role and responsibility of the high court. So the Pharisees rose up after the time of the Maccabees, and they took control of the high court. So just pointing that out right there so we can see how things kind of come down to how they came down to and put it into context. So when it says in Matthew chapter 12, going along with the fifth aliyah here for the fifth day that they call in the Gregorian Thursday, the fifth day of the Shabuah, here the fifth aliyah, comparing, contrasting the instruction and directions concerning your neighbor's vineyard and your neighbor's corn field, right? And Yeshua going through the corn, right, with his disciples. So Yeshua went, went on the a Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger. And what did they do? They did exactly what Ha Torah says that they can do. What does Ha Torah said that they can do what they done did? Right? It's in Deuteronomy chapter twenty three, verses twenty four plus verse twenty five. The main verse, verse twenty five, when thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, Raeka, Raeka, Reka, right, your neighbor, then thou mayest you have permission to pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle, a tool, right, the tool for harvesting. You're not going to harvest it. You can pass through there and grab a bite to eat, but you should now stand up in your neighbor's, you know, your neighbor's um, standing corn and start harvesting because that would be teeth. That would be stealing. So what did Yeshua and Talmudayo, Talmudav do? Well, his disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Verse 2, but when the Pharisees, a good order that had been overzealous, right, overrighteous, and had turned bad, they was in need of a rebuke, a reproof. When they saw it, they said to him, Behold, thy disciples, your Talmudim, do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day. But... He, speaking of Yeshua Robeno, our master, said to them, the Pharisees, these separatists, this, these overzealous group, like overzealous camp, we can say, have y'all not read what Dawid did when he was in hunger and they that were with him? Let's point this out, that literacy is a big thing for the Hebrews. We find it in the wilderness. They go into the wilderness and there's a, there's a, a Torah, a Torah direction instruction that says that we're to write these things on our gates. So that word sounds to write it. So how can we write it on our gates and fulfill the commandment if we can't read or write? So what did Yeshua say to them? Not, have you not heard about this? He says, have you not read? Read. That's the key word right there. Read. So what we have here in Yeshua's action here in Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 to 7, is highly significant, right? When he says, have you all not read what Dawid, what David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him, how he entered into the Beit El, into the house of El, the house of the Almighty, Bethel, the Beit of El, of Elohim, and did eat, did eat the shoe bread, that was not lawful for him to eat. Now, we know this from Ha Torah. It says that that shoe bread is what the people will give to support the priests and the Levites, and that would be inside the tabernacle, and that would be for the priests to eat. That's why he says right here that the bread that was given, the shoe bread that was given to Dawi of the tribe of Judah, was not really lawful, right? It didn't even say it was... It was unlawful, but it was not lawful. I don't know if you always what me mean. In other words, the bread was only, right, it says, for the Levites and the priests. The priests, the Levites. But it did not specifically say that it was not for David of the tribe of Judah. It was not for the tribe of Judah. And it did not say it was not for any of the Israelites, but this would be given for, so it was not lawful. So, that, so there's a positive law for the priests who are Levites to eat that bread. But there was no positive law for David of the tribe of Judah to eat that bread, right? And so it was not lawful for him to eat, neither neither for them who were with him. 
but only, right, for HaKohen, because the law basically says that this is for the priest. It doesn't say, thou shalt not, you, you not being priest, but it says, this is for the priest, a positive command. Verse 5, or have you not read? So now Yeshua backs up his Torah base, you could say argument and reasonment to the overzealous Pharisees. Second point, have you not read in HaTorah? Note, it doesn't say, have you not heard somebody telling you about the Torah? But have you not read in the Torah? How that on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Now, what's the point that Yeshua is making here? Do the priests profane the Sabbath? Well, according to where it is written that even on the Sabbath day, there are the offerings, continual offerings, and there are special offerings that the priests must offer. By them offering and preparing those offerings to be offered on behalf of Kol Yisrael, they are technically profaning the Sabbath because they are working. Yes, it's the priestly work, but it was told to all of Israel, the Sabbath. But this is also now being commanded. So all, of, all the rest of us who are not priests don't do the same thing that they do. But the priests do that work. So Yeshua is making a very important point here. First, he's checking them and saying, we're just eating corn. Didn't you read what is written in Deuteronomy? And then you're saying, oh, we're working? Like, work, work? Well, the, the priests on the Sabbath day, they do that which they are commanded to do. So in a sense, if one is walking through a corn, standing corn field, even on the Sabbath day, Yeshua is saying to grab some corn, right, and to, you know, the ears of corn and to eat it, as long as you don't put a sickle, you don't harvest your neighbor's corn, it's permissible. But they had a bad and a wrong interpretation, a misinterpretation mixed up with vain imagination. And Yeshua is checking them. But notice how Yeshua is checking them with the intelligent use, right, of the word and knowing what Torah says. So he says, how on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple, when it says profane, the Sabbath, because they have to give that offering on the Sabbath. There's a Sabbath offering, and there's the continual offering on every day, including the Sabbath day. So technically, the priests are even working. They have, it's limited, but they still have a work to do in offering on the Shabbat day, but they are blameless for that. And then Yeshua says this in verse 6, But I say to you, to the Pharisees, to the overzealous, you know, you could say, Israelite camps, right, that might be in control or in the majority presently. But I say to you that in this place, even him using the term place, because in Hebrew the term makom, makom is the place. It says the makom, the place that he chooses to set his name. And from study of Torah, we know that truly the place is he who be who he be. He is the place in consciousness. But here he says to them that in this place, is one greater than Ha-Hekal, than the temple palace. In this place is one greater than the temple. But if y'all had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Y'all would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man, the Ben-Adam, is Adon. The Ben-Adam is Adon. Even in the Hebrew, there's a little rhyme in that. The Ben Adam, the son of Adam, is Adon, right? Is Lord, is Adon, even of the Shabbat day. So this is what we heard, brothers and sisters, and what's going on here is highly significant. What did David do, or what David did? It refers to the time of his rejection. Now, when we look at what David did, not just in the fact that he got that shoe bread, you know, and also the mandem that were with him got that shoe bread that was only for the priest to eat, right? But what did David do? Remember, at that time, in 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 6, this is what Yeshua was pointing to. You know, we read these words here, and we're like, yeah, 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 I got it. And then we try to, you know, kind of make believe we know what it's talking about. We try to interpret the context from right there and not go to the reference. Right? As disciples, we're to go to the reference. What did David do? 
That means what's he talking about? What incident? What scene? This is the scene in First Samuel 21 and 6. It was at that time that King David was rejected and was persecuted by Saul, by Shaul. And to take it even to a higher height or even a, a deeper depth, both David and Saul were both Christ. Let me let that just sink in for a moment. He said, what do you mean? Christ is in the New Testament. Well, that's if you're lost in translation. He said, we have found the Moshiach, the Messiah, that is, that, is, that is being interpreted Christ. So Christ is just an interpretation in the Christos, in the popular language then, like we speak English today, of what the Hebrew means. So they found the Moshiach. But David was anointed as Saul, Shaul, before him was anointed. I think what we have here in miniature is almost like Christ or Antichrist versus Christ because it was Saul and anointed, right? Remember, Saul was Messiah. He was king. He was anointed, king of Israel. He was now rejecting and persecuting, right, Dawid, David, who was also anointed. So when people say, well, how come Christians killing Christians? Well, look what happened here with David and Saul. That is the spiritual template. Yeshua here is not so much the rejected Savior in this sense, right? Moreover, as that rejected king, right? That rejected anointed king. Hence, the reference is to Dawid. Hence, we have the reference right here, here, here to David. Just to kind of grind on this a little bit, because when we heard that, right, we said, Chan, that sounds just like what happened in the, in the Gospels. Hmm. And then as I listened further, as we're in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 24 to 25, right, the fifth alia in the KJV Bible begins in Deuteronomy chapter 23 at verse 24. But then it goes on to chapter 24, right? And in chapter 24, we have the Mosaic law of divorce. The Mosaic law of divorce. Now, something I had said earlier in the Shavuot, in this uh, week, right, on the podcast, about the law or Torah being, being a trinity or was given in a trifold way, right? The Torah has is like the, the Trinity application, when I say the threeness application to Ha-Torah, right? In the Torah, what does the Torah consist of, right? The Torah, what is the Torah, the, what's the three parts of the Torah? Habarim, somebody tell me the three parts of the Torah, all right? We have to study to show our self-approved. What's the, what's the threefold giving of Ha-Torah? Those who have a Schofield Study Bible, fellow disciples, the old Schofield Study Bible, right? In Exodus chapter 20, right, there's a footer that says there is a threefold giving of Ha Torah. First, it was given orally. That means what they heard on Har Sinai was Elohim Ha'av. They heard the voice of Elohim. They heard the voice of Hashem speak directly in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. This was pure Torah. It was pure law, but it was pure law, right, that did not have fulfillment. I say fulfillment, it was not fulfilled, right? We see the fulfillment is when the Word became flesh in the person of Robeno Yeshua. But what we have here is pure law, right, pure law with no provision of priesthood and sacrifice for failure. When the Ten Words called the Ten Commandments were given, the ten words, Hebraically, is one commandment, ten words. But in translation, it gets to be called the ten commandments. But as we study the scripture, they refer to as the ten words, one commandment. James, in the New Testament, James, he speaks about if you break one, you break all. And when you find out what he's quoting, he's speaking of the ten words, the ten commandments, because one commandment. When the ten words was given... It was pure Torah, pure direction instruction. There was no provision of priesthood there. There was no sacrifice for failure. Yet it was accompanied, right, the pure law, the ten words, the ten commandments, by the judgments, by the judgments in Exodus chapter 21 to Exodus chapter 23, relating to the relationship of Hebrew with Hebrew, of Israelite with Israelite, brother with brother, eye and eye, right? 
And to that was added, right, in Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 to 19, directions, directions for the keeping of the three annual feasts, three times in the year. We're coming up on the third one now as we're coming to the tabernacles season, to the new year season, Ethiopia, kingdom of God season, the finding of the true cross season, here, here, here. And then we have Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 to 33. We have instructions for the conquest of the Canaan, the Canaanu Anu, right? Now the words Moshe communicated to the people in Exodus 23, Four, verses 3 to 8, immediately in the person of the elders, they were admitted into the fellowship, the Chabarim. When we say fellowship, we speak about the Chabarim. They were admitted into the Chabarim of Elohim. And this is in Exodus chapter 24, verses 9 to 11. Right? And then now after that, this is before the molten calf, the pseudo falsely called golden calf incident when they broke the covenant. Right? Secondarily, Moses was then called up. He had the aliyah up. He had to go up to Kabbalah to receive the tablets. Right? The tablets, right? the stone tablets, right? the tablets of stone. In Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 to 18. Now there, when we're reading in Exodus, the narrative, it divides. It's almost like a split screen in a sense, right, in the text. Moshe is in the mount, Hahar, Har Sinai. He's receiving, right, the gracious instructions, the Torah, the direction instructions concerning the tabernacle, the meeting spot, the Ohel Moed, right, as well as the priesthood, as well as in sacrifice in Exodus chapter 25, Till we get to chapter 31. Meantime, the split screen here, when we get to Exodus chapter um, um, 32, the people led by Aharon, his brother, they break the first commandment. Moshe returning, he breaks the tablets that were written with the finger of Elohim. I must say, I always thought, I, I know it was, it was maybe a crime of passion, but I still think that was a crime because... You know, but anyway, just a reason, man. Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. Exodus chapter 32, verses 16 to 19. Now, I point this out right here, 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 so we can understand the threefold. So what are the three parts of what is generally called HaTorah, right? Well, we have, we have the judgments, right? Let's go over this right here. We have the commandments first, right? The commandments which express the righteous will of Elohim. This is the ten words called the Ten Commandments. Right? We have the judgments, the judgments that govern, govern the social life of Yisrael, of the Beta Israel. Right? Then we have the ordinances. The ordinances sometimes referred to as the statutes. The chuk, uh, chuk, chuk the chuk, chukim, right? The statutes often translate sometimes as ordinances. They govern the religious life, or we could say the spirituality, the holidays, the holy day, liberty of Yisrael. Right? So these are the three elements that form what we generally refer to as the law, or Ha Torah, as the phrase is generically used in the New Testament. Right? The commandments and the ordinances, they form one like spiritual system. Right? One spiritual system. So there are three divisions to what we have in the Torah and what is referred to as the Mosaic, right? The Mosaic, um, the Mosaic uh, Law or the Law of Moses. And there's a reason why we also refer to it as the Law of Moses. Because chapter 24, just touching on this right here, the Mosaic Law of Divorce. So when we get to Deuteronomy chapter 24, as part of the fifth aliyah, we have the Mosaic law of divorce. Before we even read that, right, because you heard it, right, already from the audible, but let's go to Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. This is what it means here a little, there a little, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because here we're checking this, the law of divorce, and then what Robeno, 
Ayin I Rabbi Yeshua, what he says here in Matthew 19 and 8. So in Matthew 19 and 8, it says this right here. He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Now, even what he says there, one has to overstand this. A lot of, a lot of day, Torah-less Christians, they don't really understand this. Right? This is the part that was recommended by Moses. So we can say this was a contribution to Ha Torah right, from the second contributor to what we have generally in Ha Torah. In other words, in the Torah, firstly, we have the direction instructions from Yahuwah Eloheinu, from Jehovah our Elohim, Hakadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, as we have in the Ten Words called the Ten Commandments. The second contribution we have is through Moshe. Right? That's why when Yeshua says it this way, they don't say, no, that came, from, that came from Elohim. No, it was known that Moses contributed to this, as Yeshua says, because of the hardness of your hearts, that he suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, from the Bereshith, it was not so. And he says, furthermore, in verse 9, And I say to you, whosoever shall put away his wife, Ishto, Eshetto, his offset, except, except the be for fornication. So if your wife is a fornicator and you decide to put her away, well, you do have cause there and right. And shall marry another, but if it's not for, for any other reason, right, and then you marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her that is put away doth commit adultery. Now, what Yeshua is saying right here, if you really know Torah, it is perfectly in line with Torah. But the problem is people don't know Torah, so they start to make a lot of pseudo-New Testament, you know, translations. Because here, verse 7, I didn't even read verse 7 where it says, They said to him, they said to Yeshua, Why did Moses then command? Who commanded? Why did Moses then command? This said Yahuwah. Why did Moses then command? Yeah, Moses commanded this, but Yahuwah co-signed that, as well as the third contributor to the general compendium of HaTorah is from the elders. The third contribution is from the elders. How do I say that? People say, why do I say that? Because there are some things in the Torah, right, that was basically the way that people did what they did at that time. And when necessary to regulate it, so it's more in conformity with Yahuwah's pure law, speaking of the Ten Words, right, what's called the Ten Commandments, then we get it in the Torah. So some things actually came from the elders, right? And because remember how the elders were brought near? The 70 elders were brought near, and Jah told Moshe to bring them to the tabernacle. See, before, Jah was just talking to Moshe in the tabernacle the ark between the Kerubim, the Kepraim, and above the mercy seat, when Moshe brought the Aishans in there, right? Yahweh spoke to him there. That's where he communicated. Because some might think that, oh, Moses, he might have gone to the mountain, but he was just making, no, he wasn't. He was communicating these things. Just as he seeks to destroy Yisrael for the Akari, and Moshe goes to plea bargain, right? He goes to plea bargain for Yisrael. And what does Yahweh do? Right? He, he turns from his wrath, right? and he says, be it according to what you have said, Moses. Sometimes I think that Yahweh is looking ahead and saying, Moses, I was doing this for the best for you, but you really want to use my word and my nature you know, to get them mercy? Okay, I'll prove I am the merciful one. But it's almost like this is going to bite you. That's what happened when he struck the stone. Right? You remember, he could not listen to the command of Jehovah, but instead focused on the people instead of talking to the rock, and therefore lost his right to enter in. That's why Moses later on says in Deuteronomy, it's because of you. He says, because of y'all that I'm not going in. But in a sense, it's because of both of them. Moses did a good deed, but as some other Yehudi say, no good deed goes unpunished. But here they said to Moses, why did Right? They say to Yeshua concerning Moses, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement? Well, why writing? Why put it in writing? 
You know how it is, hearsay. You know, somebody tells you something and tells you, go back and tell everybody this. And you run back and tell everybody that. Then they come along and everybody says, hey, why you said this and that? And they can say, I didn't say that. And you can say, yes, you did. You remember over there, over there? But once it's in writing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Once it is in writing, you can go to the record and you don't have to use so-called your recall or memory. It's in writing. You know, because sometimes people say, woman, I divorce you. Man, I get away from it. We divorce. We quit. Right? And then the woman about to pack up and go, yeah, yeah, I was just joking. I was just joking. You know what I mean? It's this little dubious thing there. Right? So a writing of divorcement to put her away. You see, they were reading this. And you know who, who it was in this second instance? It was the Pharisees again. Right, that once good order during the early time of the Maccabees that had descended and degenerated in the time of the Brit Kadash of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. The Pharisees also came to him, tempting him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to put away Ishtar, Eshetar, his Oset, his Isha, for every cause? These guys sound like the serpent in the garden. You remember the serpent, the Nahash in the garden? That someone would think is Christ. Christ wasn't the serpent in the garden. Christ was the eagle above the serpent. Oh, you don't know about that one right there. No, he wasn't the serpent in the garden. But you remember in the garden, in the garden, in the garden. You remember what the serpent said? The serpent said to the woman, Yay! You know, somebody come up to you and say, Yay! How do you start a conversation like that, a question? He says, Yea, hath Elohim said, Y'all should not eat of every tree of the garden? Do you get what's being said there? Basically what the Nahash, what the serpent, the Ibab is saying there, is saying, Did, did Job put y'all in this garden to starve y'all? Y'all can't eat nothing of no tree? See, this, this exaggeration, right? You know, you have to be able to recognize that, you know, the serpent voice, that exaggeration, where he says, y'all should not eat of every tree. In the Hebrew, even in the Amharic, the King of Kings Bible, it comes out a little bit more forceful and clear. Basically, have, did, did Elohim said you can't eat nothing of the trees. You can eat, but you can't eat nothing of no trees in the garden. Right? It's like this question that the Pharisees trying to tempt Yeshua say, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? For any cause. He just, you know, I'm just tired of seeing you, wifey. So you put away, we're divorced. And then tomorrow I said, oh, I was just joking. You know, such and such. Come on, come back. You know, that way there. So notice how Yeshua answers. He answered and said to them, have you not read? Reading. You know, so the king of kings, you know, he promotes a literacy campaign. Right, literacy campaign, right, among Ethiopians at home and abroad. And I and I want to try it in that try. Yehim him, men get no. This is the way. Vizoha derek. Reading. Reading is fundamental. Reading. Have y'all not read? Right? And then after we learn to read, let's learn to comprehend what we read. Have y'all not read that he who made them at the beginning, the Bereshith, made them Zakar? Unekeba in the Hebrew Zakar Zakaru Nekeba is Zakar is male and Nekeba Nekeba is female. And said for this cause, so you see he's responding to that question. Every cause, right? Like the serpent, every tree, every tree. You can't eat nothing. You can eat nothing. Never ever, right? Yeshua says, "Have you not read? Why you're playing ignorant, right?" That he who made them from the reishit, from the bereishit, from the beginning, made them zakar, male, ul, and nekeba. Zakaru nekeba. Male and female. And said, and said, for this cause, for what? For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave, and shall cleave to his wife. His eshet, his isha, isha in the, in the Hebrew, eshet, wife, you repoint it, it's like oset in the Hebrew. Oset, eshet, his ishto, his wife. And they, right, twain, twain is two, shall be one flesh. One flesh, right? 
verse 6, wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. Now here to the Habarim, you know, people say, yeah, how long you been a couple, 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 right? You, you hear that talk, right? Yeah. But according to what Robeno is teaching us, the wisdom here, not just the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law, he's saying that when the man and the woman, the man cleaves to his wife, they shall become one, one flesh, right? And they are no longer twain. Twain is like two, like a couple, but one flesh. See, that's in the divine eyes. That's in the Aine Yahweh. That's in the eyes of Jehovah. Oh, it don't look bad in my sight, but no, no. What does it look like in he who be who he be sight? Then he says, what therefore Elohim have joined together? That's the key condition. What Elohim have joined? Because it could be some cases that we think that Elohim has joined it, but really it's, it's, it's like the serpent in a sense, speaking for Elohim. You know, but what therefore Elohim have joined together, let no man put asunder. And now they come back at him, the Pharisees. Pharisees, Pharisees. The Pharisees, right, came back at him and said, so why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Notice, they didn't say, why did the Lord command this? You note that? See, we study in the Torah as a Yehudi, as, as a Jew as a Hebrew, as an Israelite, not as a Christian or a New Testament, or, you know, but seeking to get to the roots of it. And by getting to the roots of it, the New Testament becomes very understandable, right? As Yeshua said to the Samaritan woman, y'all worship what you know not. We know what we worship for salvations of the Yehudi, of Yehuda, of, of Judah, of the Judahites, of the Jews, if you please. It's all about POV. It's all about point of view. Because the question here is, well, who is the one that commanded the writing of divorcement? The Pharisees said that, well, it was Moses that commanded this. Right? See, people will say, well, the Lord commanded this. But you see, they're not studying to show themselves approved. That's why they study to show yourself approved. If you don't study to show yourself approved, then you're going to be disapproved because of illiteracy and ignorance. That's why Yeshua begins off saying, have you all not read? why it's important to read, right, and then to find the truth for ourselves. Find the truth for I and I self, we get to discover that truly Moses, he's the one that gave this command. And then Yeshua, he doesn't say to them, no, Moses didn't, didn't command that. It was my father. You know, he could have said that. But he basically says, well, Moses did this, like you're right about that that Moses did command to give a writing of divorce, man, and to put her away. But Moses did this because you have a bunch of hard-heartedness, right? And he suffered you to put away your wives. He knew it wasn't right, you understand, except for maybe fornication or something like that. But he knew that it wasn't right, but he knew what kind of people you were, so to try to keep the peace till Messiah, till Moshiach, right, so be it. Right? So Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, he suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Right? So just pointing this out here, because the Torah says this, When a man hath taken a wife. So when we're reading this here in Deuteronomy, right, chapter 24. You got light? You got light? Hmm? You got a light? You got the light? In other words, do you have light now on the context here? where it says, when a man have taken a wife. Who's speaking here? This is Moshe, right? Have taken a wife and married her, right? What did the Pharisees say? Moses commanded this. What did Yeshua say? Yes, he did command it because you're a bunch of hard-hearted hard -hearted ones, right? When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that he find no favor in his eyes. You notice what it says right there? And say that she did something that was disfavorable in John's eyes, but in his eyes. Because he have found some uncleanness in her, right? Just, just, a, just a man's husband, not the priest, not one who is charged, you know, with holding to a higher rule, ja rule, but, you know, amongst them. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement. Give it and give it in her hand and send her out of Beto, just send her out of the house. And when she is departed out of his house, she's like the woman that was taken captive, you remember? 
like as a man, he goes into her finally, he marries her, and then he don't like her. He can't make no merchandise of her. He can't pimp her, whore her, or try to enslave her. No, she's free. She almost becomes like a, a resident in Yisrael. She's free. And the same is with that divorced woman. When the man gives that bill of divorcement, it's like say it's final. We're not playing no games here. Can you imagine the different cases that Moshe had to, had to adjudicate among people like I and I? <laughs> You know, and when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. I know that bothers some of some of you brethren, some of us brethren, that bothers us. All right? But notice, if, the, if this is really so displeasing and no favor in his eyes, and this is bothering you so much and everything, to keep the peace in the community, just let it go. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement, Right? It didn't say that she did something hateful, right? but the latter husband hate her right? and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand because the Torah has other conditions for divorcement. You know what I'm saying? But that's according to John law. But he is basically saying, all right, mind them. Right? If the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of Beito, out of his house, or if the latter husband die, Right? who had taken her to be Ishto, Eshetto. Verse 4, her former husband, right? her old dude, the first dude that gave her a bill of divorcement, you know, old fire stick, easy to catch, watch that. Her former husband, who has sent her away first time, may not take her again to be Eshetto, Eshetto, his wife. After that, he, she is defiled. Now, to do this kind of thing, now she becomes defiled. So it's not even saying that because she, she got divorced, her first husband divorced her, that she's a bad thing. You know, she's bad or she's done wrong. No, just like her and the man, the man, you know, hardness of heart. He just had a hard heart, had to let her go, right? Now she went to the next man. Now for her to go back to the first man, the former husband, right, and to be his wife, now she is defiled, right? After that, she is defiled. For that is an abomination. The word abomination is not even as hard as the Hebrew to'eba. To'eba, it's like it's disgusting, right? Before, in the eyes of Yahweh. Now, for you and I, we fallen, fallen humanity, fallen consciousness from that Christ mindfulness. We might say, well, it's not, it's not an abomination in my eyes. Uh, you know, I like to, you know, and we went through things and things. But John is saying it's abomination, right? In his sight, right? And thou shalt not cause the land to sin. Uh-oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. You mean this thing can go so deep, not just in relationship between Israelite man and Israelite woman, that this can defile our land, our land, land, land? Now it makes me think about some areas of, of the earth where it's dry as uck. You know what I mean? You know, people live there, but it's like, and then I see how they treat their woman. <laughs> Right? I don't want to point to certain areas and get into that, but you can, you know, do due diligence. But what the Torah says here, and, and it says, Thou shalt not cause the land to sin. The land can sin. When I said the land is sin, let's put this correctly. The word sin in Hebrew from chata, chata, chata means to lack, to miss. To put it in an example, the word can be like if you aim to hit a mark, a bullseye, and you, and, and you hit it far off, or, or you don't hit the bullseye, you miss the mark in that sense, to be caught lacking, right, to forfeit, right? But this will cause the land, right, to, remember the land is she too. Let me point that out. Maybe this is the easiest way to explain it by correspondence, right? The land is she as well. The land is she. The land is she as the Sabbath is she, but the land is she. So because of what you did with she, right, the Ishto, Eshet, the Isha, the wife, passing her from man to man and then back to the first man, right, you're defiling her. And in John's sight, this is disgusting, right? And now you will cause the land to fail because of correspondence like, you know, like attract like, like effect like, right? That Jehovah, Yahuwah Loheka, giveth thee for an inheritance. So who causes famine? <laughs> God or man, bringing that question back again. Who causes famine, right? Is it God or is it man? In other words, is it the Almighty 
or is it the deeds and the doings of man that causes the land to fail? Last point on this before we write up today's daily psalm, just to share this right here. It was something about, what was it? Oh, there was a town somewhere where a lot of the people were taking pharmaceuticals, right? And they began to find out that, you know, as the people take the farms, it goes in their body, and they go to the bathroom, do their thing, right? And then this goes out into, like, whatever reservoir, however they, they so-called deal with sewage. But I think that what happened is that it went back into the land, and they found that the land was getting defiled, and the pharmaceutical, right, from the, our body, like people taking these drugs or whatever, it makes it back into the water table. And sometimes they make it back into the land. Because you know about condensation, the water, you know, how the water goes up into the clouds and then it rains over here. Yeah, and that, that was, showed me the truth of this high, high science right here, that even the deeds and the doings, you know, like how we treat our woman in our land, there's a resonance to how the land is going to treat us, right, because of the correspondence of things. And even here in Har Torah, it's being brought out that thou shall not cause the land to sin, the land to fail, that Jehovah your Elohim have given you for an inheritance. So who causes famine? Is it God or is it man? And here, 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 just this clip right here where it says that the rebellious dwell in a dry land, the, the ones who are rebellious to Yahweh, truth and life. And this is the way. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish in the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Yah, 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 and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God said of the solitary in families, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Well in a dry land. Give My advice to all advice to all advice to all advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. Fulfill the Ten Commandments. Anochi Adonai Elohecha, Lo Yelecha Elohim Acherim Alpanai, Lo Tisa et Shem Adonai Elohecha Lashav, Zachor et Yom Hashabbat le Kaddesho, Kabbed et Avicha ve et Immecha, Lo Tirzah, Lo Tin Af, Lo Tignov, לא תענה ורעך עד שקר, לא תחמוד בית רעך. My advice to all advice to all advice to all advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. you know what the offer. You know these are gay life. We do not try this. We don't try it. What the offer. You know these are gay life. Give them that to the black right. Give them that to the black right. Give them that to the black right. Everybody just a wrong country. 
world don't have it already. Man, I try to see you get ready, cause everybody don't know Jaja already. I said, I'm coming to take you. Best of all, repatriate and make we take it all. No plan for you and I, man. Work all and make we do it in a yard. Come 
Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in Thee do I put my trust. Shomreni el ki hasidi vach vach O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord, to the Lord. Adonai ata 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 ata. Tovati val alecha val alecha val alecha val alecha val alecha val alecha. Thou art my Lord. Adonai Adonai. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord, who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At my right hand there are pleasures forevermore. 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 Mizmor Tet Zayin, Nichtam LeDavid, Shomreni El, Ki Hasid Ivach, Amar LaDonai, Adonai Ata, Tovati Val Alecha, Nikdoshim Asher Baaretz Hema, Veat Dire Kol Hefti Vam, Yirbu At Sevotam Acher Maharu. Val Ashik Nishkehem Mitam, Uval Esa Et Shimotam Al Sepatai, Adonai Menat Helki Vehosi, Ata Tomich Gorali, Havalim Nafeluli Banneimim, Af Nahalat Shatera Halai, Havarechet Adonai Asher Yatani, Af Lelot Nisheruni Kiliotai. Shibviti Adonai lenegdi tamid, ki mimini bal emot. Lachen samach libi vayag el kevodi, af besari yishkon laveta. Ki lo ta'azov nafshi lishol, lo titen hasidecha lirot shahat. Todi'eni ora chayim, shova semachot et panecha. נעימות במנחה נצח. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me? Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's the point right here. Psalm 16 was it um, uh, eight vain. Now, 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 one, uh, ten is yod, and and six is vav or wow, but we call it eight zain. There's a way where because if we say yod and wow, that links with the name of the Hashem. So this is why in the letters serving as numbers, we call Psalm 16 et or eight zain, eight zain, eight zain, zain, eight zain, eight. If you want to stretch it out, eight zain, eight zain. Right, um, 16 instead of Yod, which is 10, and Wow or Vav, which is 6, because Yahweh, Yahweh, is too close to the Hashem. That's the reason why sometimes with some numberings, it's said in a because H is actually the ninth, the ninth letter, right, and Zane is actually the seventh. So it's like saying nine and nine and seven, literally. But to avoid, you know, um, calling on the Hashem and Zane. So here, here, this this point I just want to share this. So Rab. Abahu said, there's a verse in Deuteronomy 22 and 9 that says, lest, lest the fruitfulness of the seed that thou hast sown be forfeited, together with the increase of the vineyard, the implication, this world is to be cared for like a vineyard, like a vineyard. By what means may it be redeemed for man's use? In other words, redeem. What's redeeming? Like, redeem is to buy something back. In what way can it be bought back so that man can use it as ever, however we like? By baraka, by the baraka, the, the baraka, by blessing. Jehovah, Baruch Atah Adonai, Baruch Atah Yahuwah, Bless our Jehovah and the proof, Minyanim, Minyanim and the proof, Rav Shimon Bar Ben Yalaki, she cited the Psalm, Psalm 16 and 2, I have said to the Lord, I said to Jehovah that the I is my sovereign. Now when you read it in English, it's like I've said to the Lord, thou art my Lord. Um, just a small point here, I was thinking about this, and this has made so much sense, just to, just to zoom in on the practical, the practical, right, the practical application of it. So the verse is, what is it? It is um, 16 and 2 in the Hebrew. It's um, um, Amarit, Amarit la Yahuwah, Adonai, Ata. Now even the Amarit, it's really like, um, that's like the feminine sense of I said. So it's almost like the soul, my soul. So when you understand the language, like, you know, it's almost like um, Amarti, you know, but here's Amarit la Yahuwah, Adonai, Ata. I have said, La Yahuwah to Jehovah, to he who be who he be, Adonai, Adonai, the sovereign, Ata, Ata, the I is my sovereign, right? I've said to he who be who he be, who he be, he be Adonai, he be the, my boss, he be the sovereign, right? Psalm 16, 2, that is, when you are eating and you bless Jehovah, only then do you make what you eat your own. This is the key. This is like in that book, um, very good book I would advise the Chavrim to get, to pray as a Jew. This particular book right here, the way the, forget the, um, what's his name, who, who wrote it right now, Donan, I think Rabbi Donan, was it Rabbi Donan? He wrote a very good book. It really explains a lot. I've looked at a lot of stuff, and a lot of the Yehudi are very guarded about this ancient teaching, which is really from our people, we the black Jews, a lot of the original documents that, it's like hip-hop and a lot of things that we do. We see a lot of white European Jews get into it, and sometimes we have to kind of like raise our eyebrows and say, you know, that white you got some soul. It seems like he got some he, he vibes it. You know, I have to say, he feel like a homie on the level. He, you know, so if we see it in that way, in the secular world, how be it it's not in this thing that we call Ha Torah and, and Yehudinet, or so-called Judaism. But anyway, there's a principle there. So it says, when you are eating and you bless Jehovah, only then do you make what you eat. Only then do you make what you eat. Only then do you make what you eat your own. Hence, Ha El, Hail, the power, the Almighty, the El, right, says, my good shall not be held against thee. Tobati bal aleka. Tobati bal aleka. Bal aleka. My good shall not be held against thee. Now, here's how it usually is translated. I have no good but in thee. And we know Hebrew. That's one way of bringing it out, in a sense. It's like all depends on the, the not the letter of the law, but the spirit. Tobati. That's what that whole principle. So when you hear the Midrash saying, well, this verse is translated like this, but don't read it like this. You can understand it like that. That's going to what the New Testament talks about, not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. Because some people might be like, well, why do you keep changing up? No, what you need to do is receive the spirit. So that can be translated as, I have no good, but in the eye, in a literal, in a literal sense, or bringing out the inner sense, my good, Tobati, shall not be held against the Baal Aleika. Aleika, Allah, Al, is like on, on something. Like if I say, Allah, on I. A lie on I. You know, if I say Al Yahuwah, it's like on Jehovah, but in the context, it can be against Jehovah too. It depends on the sense of it. But here it says, that's why it brings out, My good shall not be held against thee. 
That is, you shall not be held guilty of embezzling. May Yahuwah, may from Yahuwah, he who be who he be, the good things, the good things you ate. Check that out. Embezzling the good things you eat. In other words, what's the reason why we as Yehudi and faithful Hebrews and Israelites that know the truth, why do we bless, why do we have these blessings over wine, over bread, these blessings over certain kind of food, even grace after meal, but in some cases a blessing of raka even before eating? You know, because here's the point, here's the point. Niggas be eating and don't be given no blessing. You know what I mean? It's almost like people be eating and don't say, yo, thanks for, thanks for that. Or they don't have to say thanks if they eat even they eat, you know, the minor of, of the teaching. Right? You don't have to give thanks for it, but don't speak against the teaching you benefited by. It. So here we have something called a blessing before eating. The Buddha called ha nehanim. Let me, let me bring this up right here. Right? 305, 305, 305. This is the page here in this book, um, To Pray as a Jew by Rabbi Hayim Halevi Doni, a guide to the prayer book and the synagogue service. Very, very good book. It really makes it digestible. A lot of things are very digestible. I must have had to go through maybe dozens of different books in Hebrew and and in translations to get a little bit of it here, a little bit of it there, a little bit of it there, but here in one book, right, it, it kind of has, 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 has almost everything. So the Berkot Ha Nehanim, right, and it's something that is said right here about the Berkot Ha Nehanim. It says the sages, right, the sages also prescribe Berkot. Berkot is blessing, you know, um, Berkot, Berkotot, you know, Berkot to say before eating. It does not matter if one sits down to eat a full dinner or a casual snack, if you snack it. Barakot before eating or drinking are part of a broader category of barakot. Barakot. Collectively known as barakot ha nehanim. And this is translated as blessings of enjoyment. Ha nehanim. Blessings of enjoyment. Said for thanks, for things that bring one pleasure. These barakot blessings are not only prescribed for what we eat or drink, but also for fragrances we smell. Right? Even for the Aishans. Mm hmm. I must admit that there's times that our button don't give a better coat, you know, and, and that is wrong because, uh, like it says in the Midrash, the Midrash reasoning, it says right here, it says that, um, hence, Hail says that my good should not be held against thee. Tovati bal aleka. That is, you should not be held guilty of embezzling from Jehovah the good things you ate. I had to pause on this when I went over it even previously, even in recording, you know, the, the, the Midrash, you know, to Helim for Psalm 16. You know, I said, Chan, that means embezzling. You know people say embezzling? Like you, you work for a business and you're stealing from the business. You say you're of, Jah, of Jehovah, right? You're of the Most High. <laughs> you're of Yeshua, you're of Kedemari Hala Selassie I, you know, and you don't give that blessing. You say, bless Jah, bless, bless, bless. Bless up, bless down, bless yourself. It's all nonsense. Let's cut that out. Stop it. It sounds nice, but it's wrong. It's, it, but it's nasty, right? It's like, it's like embezzling from Jehovah. So here, 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 they are prescribed for what we eat or drink, but also for fragrances we smell. Although, I will discuss only the food blessings. Blessings are formulated also for things we see and hear. Things we see and hear. Mm. Hello, Futa. Meriting a braka of thanksgiving, of toda, right, or miskana in Amharic, Hebrew toda, is the sight of mountains, oceans, deserts, falling stars, or the rainbow. Right? The kester demena. A braka is also called for when seeing a person distinguish either either for his Torah or secular knowledge. So one who knows the Torah, blessing, bless that one. Bless Jah, but bless that one in Jah name. If they have secular worldly knowledge, bless them in Jah name, especially I and I people. When hearing either either good news or bad news, or when hearing the sounds of thunder and storms, right? And see, so you can find the, the rule even in other parts of the scripture. They said, I'll bless the name of the Jehovah for all things and here and there. You, you find those scriptures, right? So here's showing, well, what is what what it be like in most prayer books all these barakot right all these blessings are found right after the grace after meals because some people say well yehudi we yehudi we don't really we don't really um we bless they know about the grace after meals so they say we eat and we don't bless it before well it all depends like if it's um bread and wine like sabbatically there's a baraka beforehand if it's on other occasions it's a it's a grace right it's the grace after meals so there are blessings even before eating the Barakot Ha Nehanim are not, and this is the key part, this is why I pulled out this book, right? The Barakot Ha Nehanim are not blessings of thanksgiving. Now note this, the blessings before eating are not blessings of thanksgiving, but of authorization, getting the authorization, right, to eat and not be an embezzler, right, not be a thief, a thief, right, a thief. The underlying principle of these blessings of enjoyment, Barakot Ha Nehanim, is that, 
is that, quote, man is forbidden to enjoy anything of this world, anything, anything of this world without first saying a bracha. And it's on Barakot 35A and B. Right? Yehudim, right? we, even we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, take seriously the teachings of Psalm 24 and 1. The earth and all it, or rather, bring out the translation better, the earth and all she, all she contains, is he who be who he bees. The blessing is a way of asking for and receiving ha'el, ha'el, the power, the Almighty's permission to take and enjoy that which belongs to him. The wording of the Boda Coat reflects this purpose. It doesn't say thank you to ha'el, ha'el, the power, as is done in the Boda Coat after, after eating. That's a thank you. So we thank him after eating. We get authorization before eating. But it does acknowledge him as the one who, quote, created the fruit of the tree. The one, quote, who brings forth bread from the earth, right, and the herb for the service of man, and so forth. By acknowledging his ownership, we seek to obtain a permit to use his gifts. To enjoy the things of this world without first receiving divine, divine authorization was compared by the sages to sacrilege, the stealing of items that are consecrated to Ha Elohim, to Ha Elohim, to the power true good, true God. It would be the same as taking something that doesn't belong to us, Ty and I, without the permission of the owner. The underlying view provides a basis for resolving the problem created by an apparently contradictory verse in Psalm 115, 16, that says, quote, the heavens are the heavens of Jehovah, but the earth he gave to humanity. This is a clear statement and would seem to to oppose that, quote, the earth and all she contains is he who be who he be, is Jehovah. Instead, it says that Ha'el, Ha'el, Ha'elohim, Ha'elohim, turned the earth over to man for him to use and enjoy. The sages saw no contradiction in this. I and I don't see a contradiction in this. The contradiction that some people see is imagine. It's just an imagination. Before one recites a baraka, they said, the earth is he who be who he be. So before we say, we recite a baraka, word, sound, power, it belongs to Jehovah. After one recites it, it becomes man's. It becomes I and I's to use and enjoy. So here, 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 just one little more section right here. The, the reason, the, the love of wisdom, the Hebrew philosophy, the love of wisdom, philo, philosophia, right? The love of chokmah here, of wisdom, of tibet, is also the basis for the halakhic objection to reciting a blessing either, either before or after eating forbidden foods. Now, if it's foods that John says don't eat, you know, foods that he created to be eaten, as Paul, Brother Paul says in the New Testament, and some counterfeit Christians, right, some antichrist, you know, have told people you can say, you know, a blessing over pork or over shellfish or, you know, all this, non, all this forbidden foods, right, for ones who claim to believe. No, there's an objection to reciting a baraka either before or after eating forbidden foods. That's on you. We don't bless y'all for that. One might be inclined to think that the faith and piety reflected by a blessing of thanksgiving or one that acknowledges Hila Him's ownership of the world, it mitigates, it like lessens the transgression. So people think, well, like say a blessing, well, I know he told, so in the Old Testament you don't eat it, but in the New Testament, the pastor, the bishop, the preacher, the counterfeit Christian, whatever, they say you can just bless it and you can eat even pork because the law, we're free from the law. Right? So we should just kill them then. Right? We just kill them. They say, why are you killing us? Well, <laughs> God said don't kill. Well, well how, how you just pick that out from the Old Testament? Not so, insisted the sages. It even aggravates it. It aggravates it. It says like a smoke comes up into his nostrils. Mm. You said that's just anthropomorphic. <laughs> Hold on, excuse me while I like my slip. The comparison they make is to a person who asks a friend permission to eat some of the friend's food. The comparison they make is to a person who asks a friend's permission to eat some of the friend's food. Were his friend to say no, it would be sheer impudence and brazen contempt if he proceeded to eat it, and the thank you he followed it up with would only be adding insult to injury. Since a baraka for food is a formula for receiving Haile Him's permission to eat the food, and since permission to eat the forbidden food has already been denied by Haile Him, by the power of the true good, the true God, to go ahead and eat it and then thank him shows only defiance and contempt. And this is why we call him Rasha. Because Rasha is wicked, but Rasha also means defiant. As in the four types of children around the Seder, the, the Passover Seder table, one is Rasha. The translation is not often wicked, but we often translate it as defiant. He is defiant. He is in contempt. Better not to say the Braca, for in addition to the aforementioned objections, 
it is under the circumstances also a blessing said in vain, and since the blessing includes the name, the Hashem, hmm, you don't know. To or you should to such acts of pious quote piety, right or religiosity, the sages apply the verse from Psalm ten and thirteen. What's the verse? Right, the thief who blessed has blasphemed Jehovah. The thief who blessed has blasphemed he who be who he be. So. That being so right there, just to kind of bring out this sense of the Midrash for Psalm 16, right, where, <coughs> where it says, Tobati bal aleka, Tobati bal aleka, and brought out here as, my good shall not be held against it. That is, when you say the Baraka, you will not be held guilty of embezzling, of stealing from Jehovah the good things you eat. Now, they then say another way, right, or Tobati bal aleka can be interpreted as, my good shall be brought to thee in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, this sense also is true. Tobati bal aleka. My good shall be brought to thee or upon thee. Aleka, the I male. That is, none, no, no one but good things. None but good things shall be brought to you. And they shall abide. They shall abide with you. They shall abide with the I. Because here, 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 Midrash, <laughs> a Midrash note right here. This is the first note. The commentator reads Baal. Now, if you say that Baal, you're talking about Baal. No, it is Baal, Baal, Baal. Baal, Baal in that sense can mean husband, but really it means owner, the owner, the husband, right? It can mean the owner or the husband in that sense. And yes, there's a feminine form of it, like you have a master and you have a mistress. The mistress is the wife of the master. She's a lady master. But Baal in this sense means none but, right? So reading Baal as none but, in, yeah, none but, right? In the sense of it can also mean um, um, like not, like like not in that sense or none but as an abbreviated form of Yubal is Yubal and Tubal so here the commentator reads Baal none but right or the sense of in the other translation I have no good no good but in thee Tobati Baal Aleka Tobati good right Baal not Aleka right except in the eye none but the eye here the commentator the reasonment is now looking at Baal as coming from Yubal or Tubal Yubal or Tubal has a sense of be brought, that which is brought, that which is bought, right? Or that, that you, you bring something, like bring it. Or Tobati Bal Aleka can be interpreted as, I love this one here. It says, quote, I shall wear out all good things up on thee. So Jai is saying, I'm going to wear out all good things on the eyes. That is, I shall see to it that all good things are worn out by your body. I shall see to it, John says to John people, that he shall see to that all good things are worn out by your body, but your body will not wear out. But your body will not wear out. And here, here, another Midrash note, Baal, none but, is now read as derived from Bala. Bala, 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 Bala means wear out. Bala, wear out. And this section, this is the first part of the, the first uh, parak, the first um, section here of the Sefer Midrash Tehillim, of the book of the study of the Psalms, the Tehillim, the Elilta. The Elilta, the praises. Rav Aha taught, what did Hael mean by saying, Tovati Bal Aleka, I have no good but for thee, now taking the usual translation of it. He meant, whenever I bring a good thing, a good thing, a good thing into the world, I bring it for none, no one but you. None but you. Here speaking to Kol Yisrael. Right? The words Bal Aleka are read as Bil Adeka, as in the verse from Genesis 41:44. But for thee, Bil Bila Bil Adeka Bil Adeka shall no man lift up his hand except for thee. I think this is where where the fire was saying to um, the Sutan Bat Sutan Net was saying to Yosef, Yosef. Joseph, Safna uh, Pania, uh, Paanki, was saying to Joseph, was saying that you are second in command, and nobody shall lift up their hand except for you. If somebody going to lift up their hand, they got to ask you, can I lift up my hand? Yes, you can lift up your hand, not, not even to lift up your hand. So here, Jai is now saying to all of us in the, same, in the same context, in the same context, Right here, here, here. 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 Laila Tov, Laila Tov. For those in the nighttime season, good night. And Bokr Tov, Bokr Tov. And 
a good rising. Yes, I. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. Be well. Hashem Yeshua. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.